Hey everybody, it's Aaron. So it's almost Halloween, and to celebrate, I figured I would recite a couple of stories from the book Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. It's a series of short stories collected by Alvin Schwartz. It's part of an anthology, but you remember these, right? I mean, especially if you're in your 30s. Oh my God, these books in elementary school were the jam. Loved the stories, and the drawings were really dark, really visceral. In fact, I remember many people around the country called for this book to be banned, and I know it was banned in several places around the country. And I think more specifically because of the illustrations. The illustrations were really graphic. And even as a kid, I remember feeling like, whoa, it was like something out of this world. And so as a parent now, I can understand that perspective because it was really, really dark. But the stories themselves were great. And many of them stuck with me to this day. And so I guess for nostalgia and to celebrate the Scary Stories anthology, I mean, there was a movie that came out in 2019. So this was one of the most popular books of my generation growing up to celebrate that and to feed into a little bit of nostalgia. Uh, here are a couple of my favorites from Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Enjoy. Story number one, The Haunted House. One time, a preacher went to see if he could put a haunt to rest at a house in his settlement. The house had been haunted for about 10 years, and several people had tried to stay there all night, but they always would get scared out by the haunt. So this preacher took his Bible and went to the house. He went on in, built himself a good fire, and lit a lamp, and he sat there reading the Bible. Then, just before midnight, he heard something start up in the cellar, walking back and forth, back and forth. And then it sounded like somebody was trying to scream and got choked off. Then there was a lot of thrashing around and struggling, and finally, everything got quiet. The old preacher took up his Bible again. But before he could start reading, he heard footsteps coming up the cellar stairs. And he sat watching the door to the cellar, and the footsteps kept coming closer and closer. And he saw the doorknob turn. And when the door began to open, he jumped up and hollered, What do you want? And the door shut back easy-like, and there wasn't a sound. The preacher was trembling a little, but he finally opened the Bible and read a while. Then he got up and laid the book on the chair and went to mending the fire. And then the haunt started walking again, and step, step, step up the cellar stairs. The old preacher sat watching the door, saw the doorknob turn, and the door open, and it looked like a young woman. And he backed up and said, who are you? What do you want? And the haunt sort of swayed like she didn't know what to do, and then she just faded out. The old preacher waited and waited, and when he didn't hear any more noises, he went over and shut the door. He was sweating and trembling all over, but he was a brave man, and he thought he'd be able to see it through. So he turned his chair to where he could watch, and he sat down and waited, and it wasn't long before he heard the haunt start up again, slowly, step, 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 closer and closer, step, step, and it was right at the door. And the preacher stood up and held his Bible out before him. And then the knob slowly turned and the door opened wide. And this time the preacher spoke quiet like. He said, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, who are you and what do you want? And the haunt came right across the room straight to him and took hold of his coat. It was a young woman about 20 years old, her hair was torn and tangled, and the flesh was dropping off her face so he could see the bones and part of her teeth. She had no eyeballs, but there was sort of a blue light way back in her eye sockets, and she had no nose to her face. Then she started talking, and it sounded like her voice was coming and going with the wind blowing it. She told how her lover had killed her for her money and buried her in the cellar. 
She said if the preacher would dig up her bones and bury her properly, she could rest. Then she told him to take the end joint of the little finger from her left hand and lay it in the collection plate at the next church meeting, and he'd find out who had murdered her. And she said, if you come back here once more after that, you'll hear my voice at midnight, and I'll tell you where my money is hid, and you can give it to the church. The haunt sobbed like she was tired, and she sunk down towards the floor and was gone. The preacher found her bones, and buried them in the graveyard. The next Sunday, the preacher put the finger bone in the collection plate, and when a certain man happened to touch it, it stuck to his hand. The man jumped up and rubbed and scraped and tore at that bone, trying to get it off. Then he went to screaming like he was going crazy. Well, he confessed to the murder, and they took him on to jail. After the man was hung, the preacher went back to the house one midnight, and the haunt's voice told him to dig under the hearth rock. He did, and he found a big sack of money. And where the haunt had held onto his coat, the print of those bony fingers was burned right into the cloth. It never did come out. Story number two. The Girl Who Stood on a Grave Some boys and girls were at a party one night. There was a graveyard down the street, and they were talking about how scary it was. Don't ever stand on a grave after dark, one of the boys said. The person inside will grab you. He'll pull you under. That's not true, one of the girls said. It's just a superstition. I'll give you a dollar if you stand on a grave, said the boy. A grave doesn't scare me, said the girl. I'll do it right now. The boy handed her his knife. Stick this knife in one of the graves, he said. Then we'll know you were there. Now, the graveyard was filled with shadows and quiet as death. There is nothing to be scared of, the girl told herself. But she was scared anyway. She picked out a grave and stood on it. Then quickly she bent over and plunged the knife into the soil, and she started to leave, but she couldn't get away. Something was holding her back. She tried to leave a second time, but she couldn't move. She was filled with terror. Something has got me, she screamed, and she fell to the ground. When she didn't come back, the others went to look for her, and they found her body sprawled across the grave. Without realizing it, she had plunged the knife through her skirt and had pinned it to the ground. It was only the knife that held her. She had died of fright. Seven Minute Stories is created and performed by Aaron Califato. Audio production by Ken Went. You can connect with Ken at media216.com. Original artwork done by Pete Whitehead. See Pete's work at petewhitehead.com. And lastly, I'm Corey Burse, and I coordinate the podcast. Make sure and tune in next week for another story. <laughs>